Hello everyone, Dan Hendrickson here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at Ashbury Golf Resort and we have a little review for you. We are going to be testing out the new Ping i59 irons. Absolutely stunning looking clubs. I have recently done a course vlog with these clubs. If you haven't seen that course vlog, we were at Dartmouth and we were on the short course, the nine old course, and we played these five clubs and our putters to go around that course. So if you make sure you go over and check that out, but I come up here today to catch up with Lee, who obviously does club fittings up here at Ashbury. And I thought we'd have a little go through these clubs, see what Ping are saying about these clubs, hit them on the golf course, give you some numbers of how they're performing. Now, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing from our videos, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and make sure you comment. Remember, our content is free of charge, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. Let's catch up with Lee. Let's see what Ping are saying about these new I-59 irons. Lee, Daniel son. A big thank you to you for allowing us to come up to your wonderful studio. Always welcome. What do you think of these little babies? These are very pretty, aren't they? Very pretty. Yeah, these these I range I've always found are Ping's nicest clubs. Take out the blueprint, let's say, for your everyday golfer. I think they are superb looking. Well, for from Ping's point of view, these are they've sent them to me and they've said that you know these are sort of aimed at the better golfer. Perfect then. Perfect, Perfect for in you. my hand. Perfect <laughs> for you. And you're a blade user, you use the Strixons, yeah. so yeah. they probably look quite nice to you from yeah. the first impressions. Uh, and as a blade user myself, they're very impressive from my look as yeah, well. Yeah, I so think they look superb. Could you just give us a little bit of the spec as your head of tech? Head of tech. Head of tech. Could you just give us some spec on what these clubs are offering or what Ping are saying about these clubs? Okay, so the first thing to talk about is there's actually three different specs in these clubs. So they come in standard power or retro okay and what that is is effectively three different lofts that you can choose to buy these in so as a fitter that's superb and it takes away the need to bend the clubs which in the turn can affect bounce so the seven iron in standard is 34 degrees which is very traditional you can have it in power which is 32 degrees which let's be honest isn't actually powerful these days but you know it's it's pretty strong as far as blades go or you can have it in retro which is 36 degrees so having that option I think is a really nice touch from Ping as opposed to the need to bend them. Power option, mm -hmm. four degrees of loft is quite a strong change, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite, well, it's a club change, isn't it? Let's be honest, it's the difference between the six and the seven iron effectively. So the six iron in the retro is going to be the same as the seven iron in the standard. But the difference you're getting is that each player is different. So you're going to be able to fit a player into their into what they bring at impact and their launch conditions uh, without the need to affect bounce, which is always something that bending clubs has a, it's the downside to bending clubs is affecting bounce. So being able to now have those different lofts is, I think it's just a superb little touch. So it's also a three piece forged design. So there's three different metals in here. There's um, aerospace grade aluminium, there's stainless steel, and then they've got your 1025 carbon steel as well. Um, all that is forged in together to make this head. And the last real noticeable tech thing is, as you can see on these irons, is this little screw here. So there's tungsten weighting in the toe, but they've also got tungsten weighting in the heel, but it's not in the heel where you'd expect it. It's actually up in the hosel. So this is um, designed to just give you a little bit of that forgiveness and be able to give you a bit of launch, but at the same time having that blady player's looking iron. So as I said to you before, obviously I've been out onto the golf course and I have played with these clubs in nine holes of golf, but I thought we'd head now out onto the golf course here at Ashbury and just give them a little whack and just see how they feel for us. I'm also going to get Lee to hit some shots as well, see what he thinks about the feel off these clubs so we can report it back to you. I've given you a treat of a golf ball, Dan. You have given me <laughs> one hell of a treat. I can't believe it. I've run out of golf balls and Lee is, <laughs> Lee is substituted him with this Whatever, we need a review on this ball alone. <laughs> They're great balls. Okay, so we're out on the golf course here on the Pines course here at Ashbury Resort, which is actually the scene of our 59. Oh, the scene. And we might actually go to the 18th where it all unfolded and play the four iron up there. But we are on the second hole here. We've got about 180 yards. 
I'm going to start off with a six iron. Probably Lee needed about a seven iron, but we don't have the seven iron. We have an eight iron as well. So I'm going to hit the six iron. Lee's going to hit the eight iron. And we're just going to sort of get a first impressions of how they look and how they feel to us individually. Because obviously what Lee sees and what I see might just be slightly different, um, but might be able to give you a bit more of an idea of how these are going to look to you personally. All right, Dan, 181. So first impressions looking down on the ball with the six iron is pure and utter quality. And what I mean by that is very, very, very thin top line nice squat head and minimal to no offset when I look down on this club. And if those of you that have seen reviews from me in the past, I am a little bit particular when it comes to the offset, but I'm seeing a beautiful blade looking club down on the ball. Feel off the face, first impressions is solid. When I hit a bladed iron, I want something that's going to give me instant feedback. I want something to know when I miss hit it or struck it really well, which in that particular shot there, I struck it right out the middle of the club and it felt properly solid, but also soft at the same time, which is all the things that you might hear people say when they hit a bladed club really, really well. So six iron looked good to me, Lee. What about you? How is that eight iron looking? Because you got to remember when you move into sets of clubs, the eight iron is the transitional iron, isn't it? That's yeah. the iron that starts to get a little bit more rounded in the profile to, to start to blend into the nine iron pitching wedge and then wedges in the set. So how is it looking to you when you look down on the ball? It looks superb and it's, it is quite a compact head. Yeah. You know, I play the Strixon blades for a reason because they're a little bit longer, um, but this looks a little bit compact, but a little bit sort of fatter this way. So it's kind of squished in here. Yeah. Um, but the top line looks really thin. I love the fact that it's got this white line at the bottom, something Ping have done for yeah, years. Yeah, I love that. Um, it just helps you frame the ball up a little bit more central in the yeah. club face. Down at the ball, it just looks, looks really pretty, doesn't it? Yeah. Really pretty looking club. Yeah, decent strike. Just turning over from right to left, finishing on the left half of the green. That's yeah. not bad, maybe just front edge. Feel off the face, lovely. decent strike. Yeah, it feels lovely. Really got that one out the centre. Probably a little bit higher in the face than probably you got it, but yeah. it just, I always say with this type of club, when you hit it well, you don't feel like you've hit the golf yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what I got with that. That's what people say when they feel about soft feel. Yeah. Um, that's what they're kind of trying to tell us, isn't it? Yeah, it just feels like, I actually just feel like I've taken a divot and there was no ball there. Yeah. It feels, feels like a practice swing is the only way I can describe it. Yeah, superb, really soft, love it. Fifth hole here, Lee, mm -hmm. on the Pines course, yep. 140 yards. We have the pitching wedge. Now this is an important club in the set. Whenever I'm looking at picking up a set of irons, the pitching wedge is probably one of the first clubs that I will pick up to just get a bit of an idea on whether I'm gonna like it or not. We're gonna have a nearest the pin. Okay. These challenges, they have to happen don't they, when we come to these reviews. But So we're going to get a bit of an idea on obviously how it looks, how it feels. We're going to maybe do some chipping around the green as well with this club just to get a bit of a feel from that point of view. Because again, really, really important that you look at that whenever you're buying a new set of clubs. But let's get this nearest the pin underway. You can have the honour, Lee. You just want the as target. You're, well, you're the home pro, so you, um, you, you can lead the way. Show us how it's done. Show you how it's done. Okay, first impressions looking down then Lee, just sort of give me a, a um, visual. Just looks, it looks as good as the eight iron. It looks yeah. like the eight iron, but just obviously bent, for, up. But bent further and a little bit higher toe really. Yeah. Um, it's just, they're just great looking irons. And I've, I didn't really look at the offset on the, not, on the eight iron, but there's none there, is there really? There's not, nothing at all, no, really, no, really. It's, uh, very, very similar to the, uh, the blueprint. Yeah. The, the, the pink never, blueprint blade. I've had the pleasure of looking at them. Have you not? No. No, they are. They are. They're this, they look very similar to the blueprint, but the blueprint are just that much smaller. Okay. All right. So okay. I've got to get this on the green. <laughs> yeah, we should be right club here. Oh, that's straight at it, isn't it? Oh, it's just drawing round. Where's that? I think it's just shouts, over the hill. Yeah, it'll just be on the front of the green. No, I, think. I don't think that'll be very far away from where that pin is located there, Lee. That's no, I think it's shot. on the left. You strike probably, that okay? Yeah, a little Feel? bit okay. It's like the eight iron, like I didn't think I'd hit a golf ball. No, <laughs> it's, soft it's, and buttery. It's, it's really hard to explain softness, but to me, you know when you've hit a bad shot with a club like this because it just vibrates through your hand. Yeah. When you've hit a good one, you just feel like you've swung through and there was nothing in the way. Um, 
just first impressions looking down, and I know you mentioned it, Lee, but, but that little white streak that Ping love to put in their clubs, and they've done them on, well, lots of sets over the years, but to me, it just enables me, and I've talked about it in previous reviews, but it just enables me to make, get that club almost aligned towards the target a little bit easier. I know it's small and it's subtle, but to someone like me, it, it does make a difference. And then looking down, obviously you saw the eight iron earlier on. I'm now coming straight from a six iron into a pitching wedge. And it's a very, very rounded front edge in comparison to let's say my pitching wedge from my set. And I can see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get it to blend quietly into the wedge range that they have because of the new wedges that they've just brought out. I can tell that they're quite rounded on the front edge as well, but definitely we're starting to see if I put the sand wedge in the, 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 the tall sand wedge that they've brought out in behind this club, I could see completely the blend of it, which to me kind of works. Right inside yours then. Yeah. If it's on. Yeah. That's almost like literally going to be on top of your golf ball. Maybe further left. It's, oh, there it is. Oh, you can see that oh, one. Oh, you're on. Did you strike yours okay then? Yeah? Don't know. Because that's gone, that's gone a good, good yardage, that. Yeah, no, you've done well. Right, let's see. Let's see if you're on the green. Yeah. We had an incident. <laughs> <laughs> I do love it when a plan comes together. Are you joking me? It's a club head not on the green. Oh, you get oh. a bit of bit of wedge, bit of, wedge, foot, bit of foot wedging, <laughs> bit of foot wedging. Okay, so Lee didn't quite hit the green. I've hit the back of the green there. So, pin eye. do you know what I'm going to do though, Lee? As you beat me, you were actually nearest that pin, which mm. is just there. Okay. So you were actually nearest the pin, but I actually hit the green. So we're going to take a half. Right. Okay. I'll take it. Are you happy with a half? <laughs> yeah, I'm taking it. Okay. I just want to do a couple of like little chip shots. So maybe we'll do a little nearest the pin just as a couple of chip shots. So you pick, you pick a little chip shot for us with the pitching wedge. Lee, what? I'll use my so, course knowledge. Yeah, to, yeah. To get... I, well, I think this is a good little spot because obviously you've still got to give it a little bit of a, a kick up the green. Yeah. Um, there's quite a bit of green to work with. So we'll see what the bite is like on it as well. See what the sort of spin And with this ball, like. you'll see it spin. Yeah. Oh, you certainly see it spin, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go a little nearest the pin as we're all square. We need to get a result out of this hole. So nearest the pin, Little chip shot. Okay. For Lee. Nicely clipped. Okay, so it doesn't that, spin. No, well, no. Did, you, ball, hit, did you hit the groove or not? Like was it all right? Was it okay? That Decent was a good chip. It's just a bit too hard. Yeah, it was a bit firm, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> firm and straight, that, Dan. Firm, everything's firm and straight, <laughs> you. Okay, so. Not much of a target for you, Dan. No, just, just anywhere and just inside that. It did shoot on, though, didn't it? Nice, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I do uh, like that. That, that is that wins. Everything again what I wanted to get from a, a pitching wedge to chip with, it's it's soft off the face. You don't get that kind of with some irons you can get a bit of an explosive feel off the face. Again, when you get bladed irons, you don't get that. You get instant feedback of what I feel is control. So no different than when you're putting a golf ball with a putter, you should get a bit of control off the club face. This is no different and exactly what I would expect to see from, from the I-59. The scenes. How does it feel emotionally to be back on the 18th hole where our 59 happened? We are off a slightly forward tee because yeah. the back tee is, we would be hitting driver is there, but we've just come forward and. Yeah, it feels, it feels good if I'd have chipped in on the 50 <laughs> at any point. <laughs> I think I made a putt. There was a slight tear in your eye. I could see it on the daily. I could see it. it yeah. We got it done. We yeah, got it we, done. I'm thinking of putting a plaque there. Oh, you, yeah. know, like, you know, like they do replica shots. Yeah, Tiger yeah, yeah, Woods yeah. chipped in for me. I'm going to do yeah. Dan Hendrickson chipped in chipped for me. Chipped in for, for me for the 59. There it is. Yeah, Happy but here day. it is. Okay, so we're going to play the 18th hole. Um, we're going to hit try, well, we're going to hit two four irons. So I want to see what this four iron can do. Yep. Now, one thing that I noticed when I was out playing at Dartmouth with these, uh, with these clubs was that I noticed there was a lot more height. So I want to get your feedback when we hit this shot. Um, when we play this hole with the four iron, I want to get your feedback on the height in them because I've not noticed a great deal of difference on the golf course, certainly in the few shots that we've hit out here so far, but yeah. definitely I saw a difference at Dartmouth. So before we play the 18th hole, let's just head back to the studio 
where we hit some shots earlier on and give you some numbers of what these clubs are actually doing. So how are the numbers looking then, Lee? So the numbers look really good and they look really good in that they're consistent. When I'm looking at someone in this bracket of iron, which is blade looking or blade iron, for me, it's all about consistency. Um, so we look at the average when it comes to ball speed, 118.3, standard deviation 1.3, really tight, what I like seeing. Launch angle 18.3, standard deviation 0.5. It's launching exactly the same every time. Spin 5.6, which is banging where I'd want to see a six iron between five and a half and six. Standard deviation pretty tight at 281, puts it up near six and down just under five and a half. So it's exactly where I want it to be. Look at total carry distance, 168, which for you is a bang on average. Again, like two yards standard deviation. That's four yards front and back you're getting with a six iron. It's superb when you're coming in from that distance. There's not a lot to pick out that's wrong with this club from those numbers. If you compared it to my current six iron, which I, I love and, and wouldn't really want to change, but how does it actually compare to that six iron? It's more or less the same, Dan, Is let's it? be honest. There's a very small, there's one mile an hour difference in ball speed. Yeah. Um, standard deviation again is tight. Yours launch is a little bit lower um, and the deviation is a little bit higher yeah. when it comes to the launch. Spin, negligible. We're talking like 100 revs, standard deviation the same. Uh, and one yard difference in carry, but you take standard deviation into account, they are the same club. Now we talked about this on the course, but I noticed when I was playing at Dartmouth, I was getting a lot more height, even sort of Leicester was saying, you know, you could see the difference in height of what I would normally get compared to these irons. Is that the case in here? There is a difference in height, but whether you can notice that on the course is negligible because it's 33 yards high with the six iron on the ping and you're 32. Uh, standard deviation on yours is two, puts it up to 34 and down to 30, but this is pretty much bang on 33. So I think yours can come out lower, whereas the ping is like consistently coming out at 33 and that might be where you're thinking the ping is actually going higher. But as an average, there's not a lot in it at all. I think it more, might be more over here. I think we may have been seeing maybe just a different in launch conditions. Yeah, it is possible because you look at your seven, um, your six iron, you can launch it down in the 16s. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the, the ping is coming out in 18 quite consistently. Yeah. So with that little launch, that's probably where you're seeing the ping consistently going just higher. Just popping off the club face yeah. just that little bit higher. So those numbers, as you quite rightly said in the studio, Lee, were pretty tidy, weren't they? Yeah, it's it's consistency. I say it quite a lot in my reviews. When it comes to clubs like this, yeah. you want the player who's going to be playing this wants to know a yardage, wants to know if they hit a good shot. It's hitting that yardage. They're not going to have flyers or drop-offs. Yeah. It's, it's the consistency you get, and it's shown with, you know, it's on par with your MBs. And maybe a slight difference is obviously, and you, you touched on it in the in the fitting there, but or in the studio was that you know there's a few different options. There's three options yeah, in yeah. this set that we could talk about with regards to different fittings for different types of players. So those players that want that maybe struggle to get a bit of spin, maybe you could give them something that with a bit more loft. Yeah. Um. And and vice versa. Yeah, Someone I mean, that hits the ball a bit hard, like you, you yeah. hit the ball with lots of spin. So having something with less loft might just help that and you know how you present launch angles and things like that it's it's just it's just having options for everybody Correct. um it's just a nice little touch i think okay four iron then how is it looking down at the golf ball for you tiny tiny <laughs> that doesn't uh, fill you with a massive amount of confidence is it not really no i've yeah. um i've gone away from a, a set four iron into a utility four iron um so this now like just looks like hosel rocket yeah, okay <laughs> Right, let's just whack a couple up, up this hole then and, um, and see how we get on with it. That's a good hit. Look at the height you got out of that. I mean, yeah. you, don't, you don't suffer with getting the ball in the air, but that one there is definitely high. Yeah, just up the right-hand right side. Uh, it felt a bit toey, but you look at the strike, part, strike location, it's quite central. Yeah. Probably a little bit higher than I would have normally seen a four iron. Okay. Um, that's kind of like what a flight that I'd normally see from like a six iron or something. So definitely I'm seeing now out here that height difference compared to what I would normally see a four iron do. So one thing we've not mentioned is the smart grips. We have Arcos built into the grips on this particular club. This one here that they've sent me from Ping is the MCC, so the multi-compound grip, but you've got the Arcos built into this grip, which is 
a really, really good device. For those of you that don't know much about Arcos, make sure you go and look that up. It just gives you a few more stats when you're out on the golf course. You can link it to an app. Um, and Ping embracing that, I think, kind of goes perfectly into what Ping are all about. And that is about quality, getting players to become the best they can be. As Ping rightly say, play your best. And the other thing is it's not an added extra. It's no, a standard. it's just part of it, isn't yeah. it? But you don't have to have them if you get fitted. There are, no. You don't have to have the Arcos. So what I like about this 4-iron is it makes me concentrate. <laughs> because as you rightly said, Lee, it is quite a small looking head when you look down at it. Yeah, so that's a little bit lower. Yeah, I love me. that. Did you hear that? I don't yeah. know if you could pick that up in the camera there, but lovely ball flight. that flight was just properly nice. And I don't know what it is about bladed four irons, and I don't carry a bladed four iron, and there's, there's a part of me that wishes I did a little bit more because actually they just make me concentrate that little bit more because it's such a small looking head down on the golf ball, making me sort of aim small, miss small as a kind of idea that I have. But most of the time I do strike longer irons with four irons five irons really quite nice with blades because like I said it just gives me that little bit of extra concentration level. Up the fairway and there's one thing we've spotted which we should definitely talk about and is quite an important part of any ping club really at the moment because that's what they use. It is and it's all on this part of the club and it's the hydro pearl on the face which is designed to give you better consistency with strikes when it comes to wet faces so it's designed to sort of dispel the water better than your average iron would do. Okay, which, is, which again is really, really important. You know, it's, it's just ping dialing in as much as they possibly can to try and give you, if you get too much water between club face and ball, it's a bit like being in the rough. Yeah. You get those little flyers, the spin will drop off the shot. Um, so by getting, getting that water away from the face will just give you that little bit more control. Yeah, exactly, because water won't compress between ball and club face. So yeah. if that can dispel it like a tyre, yeah. then you're gonna, a tyre gives you better grip, this gives you better spin. Exactly the same concept. Well, I've just, I've outpowered you on the 18th tee there, Lee. Yeah. I am a little bit further but up. I definitely have the four iron. <laughs> well, yeah, the way you hit it was more like a six, but okay, let's, uh, let's smash it up there and that'll put us into wedge territory okay. and let's see if we can hold that wedge shot that we had oh, in our famous, famous 59. Okay, I'm not going to lie down off the fairway. Yeah. I don't like this. No, no, not feeling it. No. Right, let's try and get one up there. Yeah, going a little left now. That's up towards the cart path area. I've nutted that. You hit that well? Yeah. It's just, it's not going to be too far away from where we actually played our shot from in that. No, I just. On um, that special day. Just uh, uphill lies, pulled it yeah, a little bit left. Yeah, over off the lie, yeah. Good. Not, not feeling, not giving you much confidence off that fairway though. Beforehand, no. But now. Like, oh, yeah, nailed it. Nailed, nutted it. Absolutely. And again, like, like I've said so many times, I didn't feel like, I was expecting to arguably thin this, yeah. get that through the club, yeah. came out, oh, was just, that was, like I could put that in the bag, it felt that good. Well, here we go, here we go. <laughs> and a few yards up. A few yards up, right, ball way above my feet. Again, really important when you're out testing golf clubs, try and get on the golf course as much as you can with them. Um, it's all good hitting them in the studio and getting the numbers that we've shown you, but getting out onto the golf course, getting yourself in situations where you've got ball above your feet, ball below your feet. All these situations are what you're going to be having to deal with. So having the clubs to work with you with that is really, really important. So for this shot here, I've got ball above my feet. So I'm going to just aim up the right hand side and just accept that I'm going to get that little bit of draw. But I kind of want the ball to do what I'm asking it to do. And that's where these clubs come into it. And you should then get some good feedback from your clubs. You don't want any shocks, you see. Much higher though, Lee. Yeah. So if you saw the flight difference, what I got on the tee compared to what I got out of that one there, that's more like what I was seeing at Dartmouth, just that a little bit higher, popped it up in the air. Not sure, maybe it's just the fact that the weight being pushed a little bit further down in the clubs, maybe pushing it up in the air a little bit more, but certainly seeing a little bit more height off the fairway than what I got from the tee. But again, very similar to what I said on the tee, four iron, squat, small looking head. It doesn't not fill me with confidence. It makes me concentrate just that little bit more. And I think for a lot of you better players out there that 
that want some good feedback off a four iron or even a three iron, then these clubs really will work for you from that point of view. Not a million miles away from where we uh, no, we were just happened. we're about level with it, aren't we? But, yeah. but maybe just a, it was obviously it was just it was in the in the fairway, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. So um, yeah, so we got recreate it. Yeah, so if you can recreate it, the pin position is a little bit further to the right. The pin position was more up here in our fifty nine, but um, ball just sat down a fraction in the rough. We're going to use that pitching wedge and just see how how it gets on from there. Yeah, it's a good test because I wouldn't normally use a pitching wedge from here. Nah, but it's always good to get it into different situations and open the face up and do what you need to do with it just to figure out how these clubs work for you. Okay. Nice, come out nice and low, chasing it on. Oh, it's in. I didn't hear anything, but we'll, it went we'll have a little look when we get up there. <laughs> uh, pretty much cut through the grass, how yeah, you want it to Yeah, it's really, no, it's it's really nice. Right. Yeah, what I like about bladed pitching wedges is they mould into your specialist wedges a lot better than sort of game improvement ones, so you can 100%. do shots like that yeah. because of the, the thickness of the sole. Yeah. Don't fancy your shot, Mark. No, well, I don't fancy this shot either. I would have preferred it if we were in the position of where the pin was when we were playing before, but uh, over a couple of bunkers, I've only, to, I've only got about probably uh, 45 yards, something like that. Just to let you know, Dan, I've called nearest the pin as well. Uh, you've but, called but, it from yeah, down there? From the wind, yeah. Okay, but you have to hit the green, yeah, on this one? Are we calling that this yeah. time? Yeah. Yep. Right, you up. Although I don't know where mine's finished, so maybe I should... One thing that's just jumped out at me. Do you notice that, did you see this, but the grooves to me, if I compare these to my tight list um, and other manufacturers out there, but the grooves to me look smaller they look closer together did you know did you can't see that I like noticed, i, I look really. down and see lots of grooves i can't say i've paid much attention but now i look at it there does seem to be look, it looks like a high toe oh a high toe wedge yeah but without the grooves continuing on yeah but yeah, it yeah. Looks... um i'm opening this up a fraction i think you need to you're going over four bunkers yeah I'm trying to get some spin on it miss that trap oh, oh. dear oh dear <laughs> Felt good though. <laughs> right. Turns me. out, Dan, mine didn't hit the green either. So that's a half. But we, we can't finish on a half, can no, we? No, it's impossible. We have to finish this. So you, so I'm like one up in this whole thing, aren't I? Because I won that chipping, chipping card. Yeah. So, I've so got what do idea. you want to do? Nearest the pin, out of the bunker, with okay. the pitching wedge. Okay, last shot then. Last and then shot. we're finishing this review. Yeah. Okay, as the leader of the pack. Well, as in like I'm one up leader. Well, that and the leader of the, the pack is in the, the channel. Yeah. I think you, you should you go, go first. Me first. Okay, right. So this is not something I would necessarily do in a review or when I'm out testing golf clubs is put a, a wedge in a bunker just to see how it works. But however, there are situations where you do need to get something with maybe a little bit more release in it. So having a wedge in your bag that you can manipulate out of a bunker. I use things like nine irons for bunker shots. So getting an idea of what this will feel like is obviously quite important. So... Um, well, let's do it, Lee. It's just a little pop shot, isn't it? Yeah. Get in. Oh! oh. Stop, no stop, spin. stop, stop, stop! That's not on the green. It doesn't matter, so it doesn't have just, to be. It, it just doesn't have to be. be no? Okay. <laughs> okay, you can place it in the bunker, Lee. Thank you. All right, Lee just needs to get this on the green. Well, no, I've got to still get it within you. Oh, right, okay. You know bunkers are my forte, Dan. This is it. Okay. Oh, a little, little, little duff and run there, Lee. But the duff and run wins. So we finish all flat. That's it. Well done. Thank you. So tell me, Lee. I love it. Your verdict? Yeah, I uh, absolutely love it. I love every club we've hit, really. I was a little bit scared of the four iron, but after hitting it up here, I think it's a great club. Um, there's no reason why someone who's a bladed player like me and you wouldn't give these an option. Um, I think the added technology of the tungsten in there does help get the ball up. We've both seen a little bit higher peak height. There's not really a lot not to like, Dan, to be perfectly honest. And I have to agree with you, Lee. I think that if you're someone in the market that you love the look of a blade, then this is a club that you need to be having a little look at. What I would say, the difference between, let's say, the i59 compared to the blueprint in the ping range is that the blueprint is properly small and does not fill you with a great deal of confidence. Whereas I think the I-59 just covers all the bases that maybe the blueprint didn't. 
and I think this is absolutely a worthwhile club to test out on the golf course if you're somebody wanting to go into the blade market. It does perform like a blade, don't get me wrong, it does perform like a blade, so if you do miss hit it slightly, you're going to feel it on the golf course, you're going to lose ball speed, you're going to get that ball coming up short, but if you want something with a little bit of consistency in knowing what that club's going to do, these clubs are absolutely going to work for you. But we would like to know what you think about this review and what you think about the new i59 irons that have come out on the market by Ping. Put your comments down below. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing from these videos, hit that subscribe button. Remember, we offer free content for you, so make sure you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and we'll see you all again very soon.